You ever heard of D-Day? Can you give me the date of D-Day? June 6, 1944. What happened on D-Day? The largest armada in human military history that had been assembling for, for over a year in England and every place else where it was possible in the Northern Atlantic. And on D-Day, June 6, 1944, in the form of five huge armies, they crossed the Channel and established a foothold on Normandy and planted the Allied flags and said, this is our turf. 20-hour day. At the end of that 20-hour day, five beachheads had been established. And they had been established in such a way that there was never, ever again any question about the outcome of the war. That had been determined at D-Day. On D-Day, with the planting of those Allied flags on Normandy, the soil of Normandy, they spelled the death knell to the Nazi regime. Can anybody give me the date of the next great event in the war? It's called V-Day and stands for the Day of Victory. Interesting. Interesting. Most Americans don't get it at all. And the reason most Americans don't get it is because we have two V-Days. Victory in Europe and victory in Japan. And because of that, I can understand American confusion. I have taught this material for 18 years, and I've had only four people in all my life that could answer that question. Now, I want to suggest to you that that very fact is an interesting phenomenon. I'm surprised that my Norwegian friends cannot remember V-Day. Okay, you've got it. Good. I mean, I, don't, I expect that in Europe, you understand, because that was such a significant event in people's lives. The 8th of May, 1945. Get the dates. 6, 6, 5, well, I'll do it your way. 8, 5, 45. That's an 11 month period. V Day. Never a question that this was going to happen. Never. It was just a matter of when. And the reason there was never a question is because that had already been decided here. Now, I understand that Americans, and I'm going to speak as an American, and I do that very gingerly when I come to the European soil, because we Americans sort of were latecomers in the war, and, and you know, we did it from a distance. We didn't experience the kind of suffering that the Europeans did. But what you need to hear from an American is that more American lives were lost in that 11-month period than in all of the other years of the war in all of the battlefronts. More lives lost right there. But there was never a question about how it was going to turn out. It wasn't a question of whether people were going to still die, whether there were still battles to be fought. There was never a question during those bitter winter months in the Battle of the Bulge as to whether it was really going to happen or not. There was only one question, and that was when. Now that is exactly how the New Testament understands the kingdom of God. In the coming of Jesus, God planted his flag on this enemy turf and said, this is my planet. I claim it in the name of the cross. And through the resurrection, he declared that there is going to be a V-day that is going to consummate what has begun. And our entire existence is lived in the certainty of the future predicated on what has already happened in the past. There's never a question about how it's going to come out. It is simply a matter of when it's going to come to its conclusion. There has never been a promise that we're not going to have to fight battles. There has never been a single promise that we're not going to die. 
What we have been promised is that we win no matter what happens. We win if we live. We win if we die. We win in rejoicing. We win in suffering. We win because God has already done the winning. It is simply a matter of His bringing it to conclusion. And He's inviting us to be a part of the mop-up operation. And the mop-up operation is what you and I are engaged in. And that may cost us our lives, but so what? When did that become important? You say, you're crazy. No, I'm not crazy. I'm, I'm Christian. I'm New Testament. <laughs>